Ever wonder what it's like to be a firefighter? I'm Kendall Lewis, and straight ahead, I'll take you inside of a burning building. Another road is in need of repair here in Morgantown, and it's not a cheap fix. I'm Patrick Clark, and coming up next, I'll tell you how this issue has caused residents to evacuate their homes. Did you know you could receive counterfeit money right at the ATM? I'm Leanne Schinkel, and coming up, I'll tell you the warning signs. Our Emmy Award-winning WVU News starts now. <laughs> According to the U.S. Treasury, an estimated $70 million in fake currency may be in circulation. We'll tell you how it could end up in your wallet. I'm Kendall Lewis. And I'm Patrick Clark. There are around 320,000 new victims of sexual assault every year. Where can so many find a common voice? We have that report coming up. These stories and more on WVU News, an Emmy Award-winning newscast produced by television journalism students right here at West Virginia University. Cold hard cash can be difficult to fake, but when forged notes find their way into the system, businesses suffer loss and the economy suffers from inflation. To date, over $350 million in counterfeit bills have been removed, but there's a good chance that fake money can find its way to you, even from your own bank. Leanne Schenkel joins us now in the studio with more. Leanne? Thanks, Kendall. It's been estimated that for every 10,000 bills, one is fake. This may not seem like a lot, but it adds up to millions of dollars of counterfeit money being distributed right here in the United States. Since 1996, there have been nine major efforts by the federal government to make bills harder to fabricate, but the problem persists today. I went to find out where it comes from and what you can do if you find fake money. <laughs> There's a good chance you have used counterfeit money at some point without even knowing. In 2013, the Secret Service collected over $89 million in fake money. Morgantown Police Captain Matthew McCabe says it's even a big problem right here in the Mountain State. Well, in the last couple months, it's actually come to the forefront because with the opiate addiction and stuff like that, people are thinking of new ways to obtain money. So um, we just had some people passing counterfeits here in Morgantown. But do people actually pay close attention to the money they give and receive? I would just assume that if I'm getting something from a bank or from an ATM that it's going to be legitimate U.S. currency. But believe it or not, even money coming from a bank or an ATM could be counterfeit. If you get something from the bank while you're there and you say, hey, this don't feel right, that'd be the best time for them to go ahead and check it because a lot of times it'll even get through the banks. So what are the warning signs? There can be dozens, but the quickest and easiest way is to use a pen that detects fake money. When you press the pen to the bill, it should appear as a highlight. If the line appears black, you may have fake money on your hands. If you are concerned the money you have received is fake, you can go to your local police station to have it checked. According to a Reuters report, $20 bills are the most common fake bills within the U.S., and $100 bills are the most common internationally. Thanks to efforts by the Secret Service, it's not an easy crime, but it's constantly under threat from new technology. Those convicted of counterfeiting can face up to 20 years in prison. Something that can't be faked is courage. Unbearable heat, smoke, and poisonous fumes. Add in sleepless nights and 24-hour shifts, and you've summed up the life of a firefighter. This year alone, more than one million firefighters across the nation responded to a fire every 24 seconds. But what does it really take to be a fireman? I spent the day with the Wheeling Fire Department, and as I found out, it's not just a job, it's a calling. Captain James Francis has been a fireman for 17 years. He understands that his team must remain calm and be able to think fast in life and death emergencies. Captain Francis grew up surrounded by fire trucks, hoses, and the desire to serve. His dad, John Francis, was a fire chief and a fireman for 53 years. At 12 years old, I went to a small um, chicken coop on fire and pumped the fire for the truck. And my dad showed up and he goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, nobody knew how to pump the truck. And he just shook his head and walked away. But since Captain Francis has been on the Wheeling Fire Department, he's also seen his share of tragedies. You know, she just did, she didn't make it, but to this day, I can still see her face. I can still smell the smells, and I can still tell you what aisle it was. It was aisle two. And it's not just the emotional toll of this job. It's an extremely physical one. 
You'd think modern advancements would make firefighting much easier, but that's not always the case. According to a recent study, newer homes burn eight times faster and produce dangerous smoke. Brittany Hoffman understands how strenuous this job can be. She's the first female firefighter at this department. I do feel that I am by far in a lot better shape than uh, most other women, but um, as far as staying up with the guys, I like to think they try and keep up with me. <laughs> Brittany says she also knew she wanted to be a firefighter at a young age and she cannot imagine doing anything else. Going out in the community and helping out somebody on their worst day is uh, rewarding every single time we get to do it. Being a firefighter is physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting, but these firefighters say once clear, return of course. it's also very rewarding. While firefighters are invaluable for saving lives, courage comes in many forms. Two out of every three cases of sexual assault go unreported every year. But with the recent hashtag MeToo campaign on social media, survivors of sexual assault are sharing their stories. Kylie Rice joins us now from Social Square to tell us more. Kylie? Thanks, Kendall and Patrick. Every 98 seconds, someone is sexually assaulted. Since accusations surfaced against Harvey Weinstein last month, victims of sexual harassment have found their voice online. Hashtag MeToo aims to give the world a sense of the magnitude of the problem, and it went viral in its first week. I went out to learn more. Chasing me around the desk, trying to get his hands on me. Pretty much put his finger in my face, and he said, men will always beat their wives. One out of every six women in America has been a victim of sexual assault. With sexual assault being prevalent in the news recently, many people have started sharing how often assault happens by posting their experiences online with the hashtag MeToo social media campaign. Prevention specialist Christine Jacobs says the hashtag gives survivors a chance to have their voices heard. It gave them a voice and a chance to uh, maybe have conversations with friends, family members that didn't know. Maybe if they saw it on their social media and they felt more comfortable coming out that way, it gave them an avenue. To help the movement along further, one woman put the mattress she was assaulted on in her yard with hashtag MeToo on it. When she returned home, dozens of survivors and supporters had written on the mattress. All of this stemming from one tweet by actress Alyssa Milano. 24 hours after Alyssa Milano's original tweet, 4.7 million people globally joined the Me Too conversation on Facebook, generating over 12 million posts. My wish is that these things are constantly talked about the way that they have been in the past couple weeks and people do have direct action and th that this is not just a social media campaign or a fad. I think it's honestly um, kind of amazing and I think the spiral of silence is like a really big deal so I think the people that are standing up for the sexual assault victims are pretty awesome. Helping survivors break their silence has become so monumental that the startup company Legalist has launched hashtag MeTooTales, a confidential hotline and online forum that gives survivors legal support. Although data from Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram show a viral spike immediately after the Weinstein revelations, the hashtag MeToo movement has continued both on and offline as allegations of sexual assault at the hands of people in power continue to surface. Thanks, Kylie. If you drive through Morgantown, you know that many roads are in need of repair. And now that the Road to Prosperity bond is passed, there are eight major projects that are on the fast track to getting fixed. But for some residents, the repairs can't be done fast enough. Megan Guerra joins us now from Studio B at the Media Innovation Center to tell us more. Megan? Thanks, Patrick. $230 million. That's how much money from that bond will be spent right here in Monongalia County. From improving and widening roads to adding ramps and sidewalks, these are just some of the road repairs on the list. And officials say improving the infrastructure in the area is crucial to boosting the economy, even though it can be inconvenient for residents and landlords. Forest Avenue has faced many difficulties in the past few months. The road cracked and eventually the hills started to crumble. Although the city of Morgantown is putting forth efforts to restore the road back to where it was, one landlord is thousands of dollars in debt because of the project. Gross revenues are approximately in the mid-18,000 18, some odd dollars a month, which has been quite a hardship for us as, as, you know, as business people who have invested in the local community. But despite the recent efforts to repair the road, the construction has left some residents stuck in the mud. It's affected me by just waking me up super early. Usually I start coming at like 5.30, 6 o'clock. Um, parking's an issue right there. 
usually um, sometimes they take up the space there. They're always parked here. The road project started in early September after the city council approved half a million dollars to install two retaining walls. And on top of the ground damages, at least five homes along Forest Avenue behind me have been damaged, causing residents to evacuate their homes. They're going to be doing their infrastructure work over the next couple months, but that takes us clear into January, February. So basically my rental season, I'm not going to have an opportunity to be able to rent this. And they're not going to be doing the paving until June, July of next year. The walls are expected to be finished by mid-November, and the water and gas line replacements, as well as paving the road, is said to be finished by early 2018. The $1.6 billion road bond will fund transportation projects throughout the state. Officials say having an adequate transportation system that addresses vehicle traffic and people's ability to get around is vital to attract more businesses. Patrick, back to you at the Waterfront Studio. Thanks, Megan. Some good news when it comes to driving and parking in downtown Morgantown. That's right, Patrick. Visitors shopping or eating downtown know how frustrating it can be to find a parking ticket waiting on their windshield. But now, officers have recently started leaving cards which look similar to parking tickets, but instead of a fine, it may turn out that you've been given 15 minutes of amnesty. The goal of this latest measure is to improve a long-standing problem with parking downtown. To offer a more permanent solution, the Morgantown Parking Authority will soon be launching Park Mobile, an app that allows you to pay for your parking from your phone. The WVU Athletic Department is working hard to help hurricane victims over a thousand miles away. And after the break, sports reporter Ryan Decker explains how the Mountaineer basketball team is stepping up their game. I'm Ryan Decker, and coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you about another WVU attempt at hurricane relief. For me, it all started with a question. Why? It drove me to look deeper, try harder, Three, think bigger. Two, no way? One, zero, yes two, way. I took that question to a place where the possibilities are endless. It all started with a little question, a little why, and a little why not. The WVU athletic community has created quite a track record in helping those facing hardship. You may remember the WVU men's soccer team raising money to benefit victims of Hurricane Harvey. Sports anchor Elizabeth Haynes has more. Thanks, Kendall. Now another program has taken up the call to help those affected by the Hurricanes. The WVU men's basketball team originally had just one exhibition game scheduled to prepare for the new season, but the team managed to add one more preseason game to help those in need. Mountaineer fans got a first look at this year's team, but not at the traditional blue and gold game. It was the impact, not the opponent, that was important. Sports reporter Ryan Decker has the story. WVU men's basketball head coach Bob Huggins said he wishes his team could play more games like this. He may be onto something. On October 28th, the Mountaineers took on Albany in a preseason exhibition game that had an impact on and off the court. I mean, man, I can't think of anything better than to be able to help such a great cause like that, all them people, Houston and all that. To, to be able to play basketball and do that, so it's great. Played in place of the Blue Gold debut, the Mountaineers' first game, the 2017-2018 season, was played for hurricane relief. West Virginia was one of two dozen NCAA programs that was able to get the waiver from the NCAA that allowed the Mountaineers to play the extra exhibition game as long as the proceeds from the game went to hurricane relief. Entrance to the game was on a donation basis with adult fans being asked to give $5 and students asked to supply one. As a result, over $27,000 was raised. I think everybody felt really good about that. And you go into it, you don't know if 500 people are going to show up or 5,000 people are going to show up. And, and uh, no surprise to us, Mountaineer Nation stepped up. When asked if we'll see more charity games in the future at WVU, Wells said it's possible. Huggins, whose charitableness is well documented, calls for more as well. You're always going to need relief, be it a tornado, be it a flood, be it a think about what happened in our state. Wouldn't it have been nice if we could have done that for the people in our state? Ryan Decker, WVU Sports, Morgantown. American Red Cross volunteers collected donations at the Albany game. The average donation was slightly above the requested $5 minimum per person. And every little bit helps, as the Red Cross has donated over $50 million so far to the hurricane victims. And at an added reward, the Mountaineers pulled out a win. Thanks, Elizabeth. That's good to hear. I agree, Patrick. 
Looks like the spirit of holiday season has come in just in time. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of WVU News. You can visit us online on our website. You can also watch our shows on YouTube, and please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Patrick Clark. And I'm Kendall Lewis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.